happy birthday. I don't want you to have it like that. Oh. It's upside down. Okay, hold on. Happy birthday to my dad. That gets better than that. been a hot minute since we've been able to do some filming and keeping up with our family we've been even though it's been laid back with quarantine we've been so busy with homeschool anybody out there feeling that we'd love to hear from you comment down below and let us know how your quarantine is going how your homeschooling is going so today is a special day we thought we would jump back in to videos with today uh, it's Chris's birthday and we are so thrilled to celebrate this wonderful man and father and husband and son uh, so today we're gonna kind of walk you through our day and let you celebrate with us and show you some of the things that have been happening recently, some of the sweet little moments we have. Now in preparation for celebration of Chris's birthday, I've made his favorite cake. And if any of you will know Chris at all, you'll know that it's tres leches. So we've got the three milks cake, tres leches. And then we've set the table. We are ready for a celebration. And we have ordered in Mexican food from Chewy's. Give us a holler if you like Chewy's. And it's gonna be a great celebration. We're excited, 35, no, 29. He's 29 and holding, right, mom? Yeah. Well, off I go to Chewy's. I'm so excited about Chewy's because it's Mexican food and Chris Cotton's birthday and he deserves it. So, here we go. <laughs> it's the birthday guy. Happy birthday, Chris. Thank you. Are you excited Good. about your dinner? Absolutely. We got Chewy's. Chips and salsa. I mean, this oh, is wow. Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Cristo. Mm. Guys, I thought I would um, let you talk to the birthday boy himself. Happy birthday, Chris. Thank you. Before we get started with questions, I just wanted to say a very happy birthday to my sweet, wonderful, kind, gentle husband. You are truly an amazing man and a great father, oh. and we love you. Love you, too. All right, we have five questions we wanted to ask today of the birthday boy, just to kind of see about his thoughts about China and different things about China. So let's jump right in. Actually, we get this question a lot. First, the first question I wanted to ask was about language school. When we first moved to China, where, where did we move to? Yeah, so we moved to Shanghai and we attended a language school called TLI, and, Taipei Language Institute. And how often did you go and? Um, yeah, so it was, uh, we had some friends recommend that um, you, whatever hours you spend in classroom study, you should also do that outside on your own. So uh, I did three hours of classroom time and then uh, three hours uh, throughout the rest of the day uh, studying on my own. And that was uh, about as fast as I was able to take it in. Any, any faster would have been really hard. So if you were to do this again, would you recommend that you live in an area with mainly uh, local Chinese people so that you could practice more? Or would you say that a community of foreign people is, is a more helpful thing? 
Yeah, I mean, I guess it kind of is a matter of balancing language needs uh, and uh, culture shock issues. Um, you know, of course, I think anybody would, and uh, it's pretty obvious that if you are in a completely immersed environment, that's going to be much better for your language acquisition. But and at the same time, may, you know, maybe you're suffering from culture shock, and so you, you need some of that uh, comfort, whether that's comfort food or familiar friends or, or that kind of thing. But, but yeah, as much as you're able to, uh, dive deep in the culture and, and um, make friends and, and have people over to your house or go to their house, and that'll really help your language skills improve, even when you feel like you're not uh, there, uh, ready for, uh, for that level of interaction. Um, stretch yourself. Yeah. So this all leads up to my main question. Do you think that language study was worth it? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. hundred um, percent. And, and I think each person, uh, their language goals, um, ability to pick up the language, um, timing, you know, everybody has their own kind of specific uh, things that they're looking uh, to do and, and whatever. But yes, I would absolutely recommend any sort of language school. Um, you know, if, if, if you don't speak any Chinese whatsoever, you know, it's really hard to get even simple things done like water d being delivered to your home or, or going out and trying to buy things, that, you know, if you can't even count numbers or something like that. Um, but being able to speak the language well enough to make friends, that is when China comes alive and, uh, and it, it becomes like home because you have friends, you have deep, meaningful relationships. Uh, and um, whether or not they're uh, happening in English or your native language. All right. So for question two, I wanted to kind of go back, let us kind of journey back in our minds to China. We're kind of missing China these days. Absolutely. Missing our friends. We love you guys. Missing our, our town, missing Shanghai, missing it all. But I wanted to know your favorite place that you've ever visited in China. Mm. Okay, so let me say first, I've been to most of the big touristy areas and and obviously those are kind of first level things. You know, you gotta go to those things first. Um, what but, things are you talking about? Oh, like uh, the Great Wall, the Terracotta Warriors, uh, those things. Uh, there's a couple places uh, that I haven't been to like Guilin, which has those uh, real beautiful uh, mountains that um, uh, rise they? real sharply, uh, but also have some water. The Avatar some, Mountains, yeah, they all uh, call well, there's that place, but also uh, Guilin has these kind of like cone-shaped mountains that are uh, not particularly tall, but uh, beautiful. But anyway, uh, places that I've been, um, in addition to uh, those uh, real famous landmarks, is um, in northwest Sichuan province. I, used, I took a trip there, and boy, it is so beautiful that that plateau, the grasslands, the, the rugged mountains. Oh, unbelievably beautiful. A, a lake made from uh, glaciers. It was excellent, excellent. So incredibly beautiful. Yeah. Our son Camden wanted to say hi too. And I'm, I'm interviewing Daddy about his birthday. You wanna say happy birthday to Daddy? Happy birthday, Daddy. You love your Daddy? Mm-hmm. Oh, we love you. Yeah. You wanna say hi to our friends in China? Hi, friends in China. You wanna say hi to any other friends around the world? Hello, friends, um, all around the world, and please like and subscribe. Ooh. Well, thanks. All right. So for our third question, I'm kind of kind of piggyback off of that idea and say, where would be somewhere that you want to visit? If you could pick a dream oh. place in China specific, where would it be? Okay. Uh, there's about a hundred places that come to mind, and. Uh, China is full of some of the most beautiful places I have ever been to in my entire life. Um, if I were to rank my most beautiful places uh, in the top 10, most of them would be in China. Um, that said, uh, I really want to go to a place, it's kind of like the Yellowstone National Park of China. Uh, uh, anyway, um, that place, is, uh, from the pictures, it looks beautiful. It's, it's got this stunning clear water, with these really neat colors, and, and it really is very, very similar to uh, Yellowstone National Park here in the United States. And that's where you would have picked to go? Yes, but there's a hundred other places that I would all uh, like to go in addition to uh, that place. All right. Okay, so still thinking about China kind of in our minds, what food do you miss the most from China? Oh, um, I love Gambi and Sijido. Uh, that is one of my favorites. Uh, it's basically green beans, 
uh, that it's green beans is so good. Yeah, green beans that are uh, pan fried in, in like the slightest amount of oil, and they've got Sichuan pepper corns, uh, which uh, they're kind of numbing, uh, delicious. Uh, with uh, also with um, red chilies and uh, salt and and garlic, and uh, it's just it's so so, good. so wonderful. And and haven't found that. Um, also, one of my favorite breakfast foods is uh, called a Shandong Jian Bing. Uh, that is so good and uh, where we live now in Dali that those are impossible to find but uh, when the place where we used to live in in Shanghai uh, had lots of those nearby and oh man if I could have those two things I would be so happy all right okay so to finish up this time today I just wanted to kind of to see what you miss most about China right now what are you we've been away maybe two or three months now what is it that you're missing the most about our China. Yeah, um, definitely our friends and the relationships that we've built. Um, those are the, that's the one thing that I miss profoundly. I, I also just um, miss um, just kind of the, uh, the, the life that we'd set up and, and uh, the things that we did and, and the culture and um, just being among the people we love. Uh, we we miss it and uh, hopefully we'll be able to return soon uh, just uh, kind of a matter of waiting at this point all right well happy birthday to chris uh, we'd love to have you comment below and wish him a happy birthday that'd be really fun and special and for those of you that are still in lockdown please be safe and careful those of you that are that it's opening up for you we're thrilled that that is the case everyone stay safe and careful and best wishes and happy birthday to you if this is your birthday as well <laughs> Peace.